Hello again, this is Josh, bringing you another Science and Sailing, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how we actually caught the plankton that we talked about in that earlier video. So plankton, as we discussed, can be very small animals or even small plants that are floating around in the water. So what do you think we use to catch them? A fishing pole? Probably not. That wouldn't work too well. How about a bucket? Have you ever tried to catch something with a bucket? It's fairly difficult. Some of you may have set a net, and we do kind of use a net, but with very tiny holes. So if you look right here, you can see my hand through this net, and it's very fine. These holes are very small because a lot of the plankton that we're trying to catch are very small. Otherwise, they'll just go through the holes. And this net starts out wide and gets narrower and narrower until it gets to a little bottle at the end, this clear little tube where all the small plankton are collected. Then we're gonna take this tube and we're gonna dump it into this beaker and see what we can find. All right, so before you put your net in the water, it's important to tie it to something. Otherwise, you might lose your net. So we'll take it like so, toss it in. Now you need to make sure that that little um, plastic bottle gets filled with water so that's not floating at the surface. Now as you guys look at our net, is it at the bottom or is it at the surface? Well, it's at the surface. Why do you think that is? Where do you think that plankton live? Let's think about it a little bit. So phytoplankton, if you remember, are the plankton that are like plants. And they need the sunlight in order to do photosynthesis. Well, if they need the sunlight in order to survive and to conduct photosynthesis, then can they be at the bottom of the water? No, they have to be at the top, right? So that the sunlight can get to them. And what eats that phytoplankton? Well, if you remember in our food web, Many of the next things that eat those, those primary consumers, are zooplankton, the animal type plankton. Well, if their main food is at the surface, then where do you think many of the zooplankton are at? At the surface, so that they have a food source, so that they can eat the phytoplankton, which are sitting up there soaking up the rays. Now, typically, we would let this net sit in the water for five to 10 minutes and try to collect the different plankton that are in it. However, I don't want to bore you by letting the net sit there. So I'm going to try to drag it along and speed up the process just a little bit and see if we can catch anything. All right, let's see what we've got. So it's hard to see on the camera because most of these animals, like I said before, are very small. And you probably can't see this, but there's actually tiny little specks in there, even smaller than a grain of salt. And those are most likely copepods. If you've ever seen the movie or the show SpongeBob or the movie, the enemy of SpongeBob is a copepod, the most abundant animal on the planet. Now we'll take our little vial. This is the hard part. You gotta get your arm wet. Reach down inside the net, pull that vial out, and we would dump it into the beaker so that you can look in there a little easier. And we would take our pipette Stick it in and suck up any plankton that we want to look at under a microscope. Unfortunately, we won't be able to do that right now, but this is how we extract them from the beaker. Do you guys have any questions about how we captured our plankton? Can you guys think of any other methods that you could use to capture plankton? Let us know in the comments section below. This has been Josh, bringing the Bayshore to you.